Hi, we're here at Ericsson Country, which is a huge hall with thousands and thousands of people and hundreds and hundreds of things they show. And it's an interesting place because it gives an insight of what the broadcast industry is going to. I'm first going to show you the connected car because, of course, this is Volvo. This thing has been connected for a long time. Everything out of this car goes into the cloud. Internet of Things is really hot here at the trade show. But they show non-trivial services. For example, if this car, if it basically is an ice, bang, the car notices it. Immediately the drivers, of course, noticed, but that's not very interesting. He sees, he has to be careful. But the information is broadcast up to the cloud and it, all these messages from these connected cars arrive in the connected traffic cloud. And on the control center, they basically say, what are we going to do with this? They basically have all this information coming, coming to the center and it's sending it to the control center. And then what happens is we have a messaging enabling. All the people who are in the neighborhood get information. Here it's IC, be air, beware. And they basically can send it to the car's dashboard, they can send it to the uh, phone, or they can send it to all kinds of signaling all over the road. Very handy connection, Internet of Things, connected car to safety. Okay, it can save also lives. For example, this brave man who's basically biking along and he's seeing there there's a road coming. He's getting a warning by his phone and his helmet is being informed. It's vibrating, but he doesn't want to stop. He basically is tired of life, but the car, oh my God, the car stops on time because of course the car is, send, is getting the message that this biker is going to continue and a life is saved. How wonderful. Everybody's excited about 4G. We're enjoying it every day. LT is great, but we're working now on 5G. And what is that going to bring us? Of course, higher speeds. Okay, we're now having 100 megabits. We can have do 300 megabits, but we're going to gigabits and five gigabits. Here you see an example where five gigabits is basically transmitted. And if I now put in front of the antenna, the speed will go down. So you really see it's a live picture. All that stuff is now going through my body. Now, what are the advantages of 5G? Of course, higher speed. But more importantly, lower speed, but guaranteed delivery is the second main feature of 5G. Internet of Things uh, connectivity is very important, but what's really important is the latency. Very low latency, and where does that lead us? I'm going to show you. Okay, and what can you do? You can operate things on a distance. Here we see a central camera, very slow. It, it has a very high latency, but we can get a picture. This is a machine which is 2,500 kilometers away in Sweden, and you can dig a hole by using uh, on a remote distance. Here we see somebody with virtual reality operating this machine. He's really operating machine. And what he sees in this helmet is this here, the virtual reality. It has 3D depth and he's operating that machine without any latency. It doesn't matter if you're a surgeon, it doesn't matter if you're a crane operator or if you just do anything remotely with 5G and very low latency, that kind of stuff is possible. Now all this Internet of Things, all this Connectivity everywhere, all these new services means telecom operators have to be flexible. Now, if the telecom industry is something, it's not flexible. All these specified hardware, special boxes, which take months to deliver and to deploy, all this specialized software, it is very, very, very slow to innovate. Now, that's why the telecom cloud comes in. They're basically doing what the ICT industry is doing five years ago. They're going to standardize hardware. Hardware and services are being disconnected, standardized hardware, they're basically adapting um, open source. They're not only doing you know, expensive licensed software, but they're using open source more and more. And they're basically uh, making sure that on the same platform, you can run your telecom services, your ICT services, and you can provide a commercial uh, cloud for your clients. Flexibility and, and, a, and fast adaptation of innovation, that's basically the key, and that's a complete transformation of the current system. Okay, we have the virtualization of everything. We have the virtualization of hardware and software who are disconnected, software layers who are basically being more flexible, and even hardware. So what you see here is the hyperscale cloud. It's an Intel concept, but Ericsson takes it one level further. You have a whole bunch of racks, and that's flexible. But then in here, you basically now with Ericsson, you have memory 
processors and disks who are separated. It's not only in one rack, but you can have a bunch of uh, processors separately in there. If you need more processing power, take the processors out, put more in, and the whole software configures everything itself. On the back end, everything is optical connected, and that makes it very flexible, and it makes it also much more price conscious. You can basically have a much higher uh, utilization rate, and so lower cost, but very fast software-driven innovation. M2M, machine-to-machine -machine communication, is now being renamed IoT, Internet of Things. Sounds much nicer, much more fashionable, much more expensive, and it is really also the theme of the show. Now, platforms which basically allow telecom operators to deploy a huge amount of scanners. It doesn't matter if you have a supermarket scanner, who basically is used in hundreds of places, of, or it's the cars, or it's the thermostats, or it's anything. They need to be secure, connected to an individual, and business processes need to be defined. Platforms who make that possible are really important, and Ericsson, of course, has one, and so as there are a couple of other ones, but they basically deploy all these Internet of Things gadgets in a secure and a transparent way. And, of course, all these broadcasters are busy with TV, old-fashioned TV in a new way. And, of course, they basically you can watch TV on the screen. You have all the hardest recorders are in the, in the network. And you can view on your iPhone or you can view on your smartphone, on your tablet on your, or your uh, MacBook. And then, of course, continue on your big screen. To make that possible, all these back-office systems need to be very flexible, completely IP-based. And that's what guys like Ericsson are providing, too. But of course, when you're watching TV on your, uh, on your smartphone or your tablet, if one person does it, no problem. Four people do it, no problem. But if 100 people or 1,000 or 10,000 people do it, like with TV, that basically clogs up the network. Therefore, they have LTE broadcast. And in this system, if you have more than one person looking at the same video stream, it switches to broadcast mode, and then it doesn't matter if 1, 10, 100, or 1,000 people watch it. That also means it doesn't have to get out of your data bundle. So watching television with 100,000 people will be absolutely no problem for the network with this broadcast system, and that's important for the future. We have all these connected services, and we use all this bandwidth and video and Internet of Things. That means we need a lot of base stations. And these base stations, people don't like them in the street, so they basically are also put in to things like this. A nice commercial board with video. And if you look here on the side, you can pay for parking. But inside, here's a parking place where you can basically put in your license plate. And then here, you open it up, and these are the base stations, completely hidden from the view. And these are small pico cells, which basically only cover maybe four or five hundred meters, but basically, and they're invisible. And there's a lot of innovation in base stations. They make them less, there's less equipment, they're less visible, means you have to pay less rent. So there's also a lot of innovation in that area. Okay, we're back. I've seen all the innovations. It is everywhere. It's in the back, back office, it's 5Gs, it's the Internet of Things, it's in the living room, and it's a lot on the, uh, working on the antennas. There's a lot of innovation which is coming. Everything needs to be flexible. The innovation speed is going to accelerate, and you see here where it's going to in the next couple of years.